So given the recent huge success of Marvel's Black Panther, I think a question that's going to be on an awful lot of people's minds is how is this going to affect the Disney parks in the future? Well, we'll get into all of that up next. Hi there Waltoners, I'm Jack, this is DSMI Newscast, and for today we're going to be discussing the Marvel massive hit of Black Panther, as to call this movie anything less than a box office giant would be an understatement, as the movie has currently accumulated a domestic gross of half a billion dollars in the US alone, and has a worldwide box office total of $921 million as of this recording, and certainly by the beginning of next week, it will have crossed the $1 billion mark. Now this is something truly amazing, and it's something that Disney and Marvel both weren't expecting this movie to accumulate this level of success, as Disney have had to raise their box office early estimates for this movie during the opening weekend, and that's something that Disney is always pleasantly surprised to do. But to put all of this into proportion, here's a chart that shows us the top grossing Marvel movies, and considering the star power that went into that first Avengers movie, compared to that of Black Panther, being the first movie in its franchise, that is an astounding and unprecedented success for this Marvel movie. However, when we're talking about this topic, there is another critical comparison to make when we're talking about Marvel within the Disney parks. As we know just how much of an effect Guardians of the Galaxy has had on the Disney parks and resorts, as the franchise has received its first attraction in Mission Breakout in California, and has the Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster confirmed to be coming to Epcot in 2021. And so if you look at the box office success of these two Guardians of the Galaxy movies compared to that of Black Panther, it's not even close. But it is more than just box office success alone when we're talking about the potential of movies becoming attractions within the Disney parks, as what really matters for Disney is the resonance that it has with an audience. And well, Black Panther has more than just resonated with an audience, it's become a sort of cross-media cultural phenomenon, and the last Disney movie that we saw this kind of cultural reaction to was arguably Frozen back in 2013. So we've established that this movie does have the qualifications for a Disney Park presence, but now we get to the tricky issue of where and what is currently being considered. As Disney CEO Bob Iger quite openly addressed this matter on an earnings call, saying that they haven't had chance to build a ride yet, which was quite obvious as attractions take ages to build, which we all know far too well, but then again he did say that they have people working on it, and that is an indication in itself that shows us what Disney really feel about this movie, as Imagineering are always thinking about how they could adapt any upcoming movie property into an in-park experience, but Disney CEO Bob Iger usually sidesteps these types of questions, so take this as an early indicator of progress in this area. However, this is where the issue gets difficult, but not entirely impossible, as the Marvel Action Universe Agreement, which is the contract that gives Universal Studios the exclusive rights to all of the characters involved in the Avengers, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four and the X-Men comic book series, but the main thing here is only for Universal Studios Florida, and as we can see Black Panther is featured on this poster within Universal Studios, as well as Universal featuring this character on merchandise recently. But this doesn't mean that Disney aren't working extremely hard to try and find a loophole which will either allow them to build a Black Panther themed area, as the contract itself wouldn't allow for the use of the character within in the Walt Disney World parks, but they could possibly use the land of Wakanda within Walt Disney World. As industry insider Jim Hill has recently stated on the Disney Dish podcast that Disney are in the very early stages of possibly using the Wonders of Life Pavilion as the location for the Wakanda themed attraction and area within Epcot. And this would make a lot of sense for why the Wonders of Life Pavilion was recently examined by Disney Park executives, and combine it with the fact that it will no longer be used as the festival center, as Disney have recently announced that the Odyssey building within Epcot will become a flexible space that will be the home of the festival center and other such events that were previously held at the Wonders of Life Pavilion. But it's important to note that all of this is a very early rumour and it's nowhere near being confirmed as of yet. But one thing is more certain out of all of this, and that is that the Black Panther character 
can and will easily be featured within the superhero universe that's coming to Disney California Adventure and will most likely have a presence within the upcoming Marvel Land at Disneyland Paris. But now let's move on to another big piece of news as Disney have recently filed permits with the South Florida Water Management District to begin exploratory tests on the ground quality of the old River Country water park site. And for those of you who never got to experience River Country, it was Disney's first water park, opening in 1967 and closing permanently in 2001. And I'd highly recommend, if you want to learn more about this, watching Bright Sun Films video on it, as I'll put a link in the description box. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that some is definitely going to be built in this area like a hotel, but instead Disney are doing initial tests on the ground quality to see the suitability of the wetlands for a possible construction area. Whereas over in Disneyland we have a small update regarding the Together Forever nighttime show that will debut as part of Pixar Fest. As it now seems that in addition to Buzz Lightyear being zip wired in front of the castle by <laughs> that Carl's house from Up may also be featured as some sort of dirigible at the back of the castle during the show. But now, it's over to you, Walton, as I would like to know how would you include Black Panther or Wakanda within any one of the Disney parks, and what kind of ride or experience would you provide? And of course, as always, don't forget to put the timestamp of where the Hidden Mickey appeared somewhere within this video, along with your suggestion or your comment to being with a chance to win a DSMI Newscast pin. Congratulations to Mitchell for winning with this suggestion from a previous video, where we were talking all about the entrance, exit, and queue layout of the Battle Escape attraction that's going to be coming to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And so that's it for today, so go ahead and subscribe down below, hit that notification icon, and if you've enjoyed today's video, give it a massive thumbs up, as it really does help this channel out. And I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.